Well, this morning, I want to start out just jumping right in to a scripture. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. So I'm going to go ahead and go there in my browser, Matthew chapter 16. And so let's go ahead and read that, reading out of the New American Standard. The Pharisees and Sadducees came up, and testing Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times? This message is called Storm Warnings. And, you know, Belinda always, when she gets uh, she, when she gets wind of my title, she always kind of questions them. And she's like, hey, is this going to be another like doomsday message? Is this going to be like another prophecy message or, or something along those lines? And, you know, I don't consider what most people consider doomsday to be doomsday. I consider it more being prepared and being ready for what is, is happening. But I don't believe it's one of those messages. So hopefully you will be encouraged as we uh, go through this message. Listen, just recently, and those of you that uh, follow me and, and have been on uh, the messages before, know that I have a, a website, a preparedness website. And just recently, we celebrated 10 years of, of being active. You know, we started on September 20th, uh, 2011. And so 10 years, that's a, that's a big deal. And I, when I started it, I didn't start it because it was cool, right? The, 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 the Prepper website, I didn't start it because it was cool or I was looking for a side hustle or I thought this was interesting. I, did, I really did it because I felt the Lord was leading me to do this. And I've talked about this before in the past, so I don't want to go over it and kind of rehash it. But I really felt that it was the Lord leading me to move forward in this preparedness, being prepared, talking about preparedness and helping other people to be prepared. And at the time that I heard it, at the time I felt the Lord leading me that way, I didn't know what it meant. And sometimes the Lord works that way, where he gives you a little bit, lets you kind of sit on it and chew on it a little bit. And then he begins to show you other things and, and, and you just it just evolves. And that's what happened. And throughout those 10 years that we have been going on with, with the website, and now the podcast in February will have five years. I and mean, we'll be five years old on the podcast. Being able to do this has allowed me to help other people. You know, not not only in ministry, you know, in, in ministry, you can help other people spiritually. You can help other people through counseling. You can help other people, you know, on as, as, a, as a missionary and, and going out there and getting them right with the Lord and all of that. But this has allowed me to help people on on another level, but also on the ministerial level as well, because it has given me a platform and the ability to talk about being prepared, but also talk about my faith in so many different aspects. And I've heard from so many different people out there how the, the message of faith, because I don't shy away from it either on the, the website or even on the podcast. You know, I've had people before when I've uh, written an article and someone has said, you know, hey, I didn't come here for any spiritual stuff. I mean, I didn't let that deter me. Or when I talk about it on the podcast and, and people leave me a nasty review about that, I get four or five more positive reviews that, hey, we really appreciate you talking about your faith. So I've been able to talk about faith and been able to minister out there. And I've received messages from different people throughout the years on how it has blessed them. But in learning about preparedness and being involved with preparedness, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, you know, in, in, in doing the website and doing the podcast. I've learned a lot about how to be ready for emergencies. And one thing that I can tell you is this. Being prepared is just common sense. It's just common sense. It's what people in the old days, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, used to do. It was just automatic. I mean, today we have 24-7 Walmart. We have, you know, Amazon. We have all of that kind of stuff that is so ready and, and available to us. And we can just order whatever we want and it comes to our store. But people used to not be able to do that. But in that 24-7 Walmart and in the Amazon and in all of that, the last couple of years, how has that been working out for you? There have been times where, you know, you order something on Amazon and like they, they, they deny it because we can't get this to you. Or you order online 
at Sam's or Walmart or whatever and you can't get it. Or you go to the store and you can't get what you need. So being prepared is about being ready for any kind of emergency. You know, just recently I was listening to someone talk about preparedness who really doesn't talk about preparedness and they really don't understand it all. They said being a prepper, being prepared is about having stuff. And I was like, no, that's not really what it is. Because if it was about stuff, then the people that are millionaires and have a lot of stuff would be preppers. So that's not what being prepared means. Being prepared means planning ahead for the emergencies that might come. And so there are possible emergencies and there are probable emergencies. So possible emergencies, I mean, you've, you've heard lately in the news, if you follow the news about, hey, this comet is going to come close to Earth and, and all that kind of stuff. There are people who prepare for that. And really, you can't really prepare for that. I mean, you don't know where a comet's going to hit. You don't know. I mean, that is possible. When we talk about definitions, that is a possible emergency. There is some legitimacy to it. Can it happen? Yes, it can happen. What are the, you know, the percentages? Very, very low. So it's very possible for that to happen. But most people prepare for what's probable. The things that are more likely to happen. Like, for instance, down here in the Gulf Coast, those of us who live down here know about hurricanes. We know, I mean, when a hurricane is churning in the Gulf, we know like, hey, we're paying attention. And, you know, hurricanes can be anywhere else. But the minute that it comes into the Gulf, we're, we're, we're paying attention to that. And we've experienced a lot of that. And so we are prepared for a hurricane. People know what it means to be prepared for a hurricane. They go to the, the grocery store. And so anyway, uh, a hurricane can be turning in the Gulf and, and no one is doing anything. But the minute the, the models say it's coming to Houston, everyone hits, the, everyone hits the stores and then everything's out. Because everybody knows that they don't want to be without food. They don't want to be without water and they don't want to be without lights if the lights go out. So people know that hurricanes is something that they really truly need to be prepared for. But now we are in some crazy times and I don't want to necessarily talk about all the craziness that's out there. I don't necessarily want to talk about all the, you know, like the shortages and the supply chains and our economy and all the politics. I don't want to talk about all of that as far as why not to mention those aren't really things that you can control either. You can't control those things, but you can mitigate how you plan and prepare for the effects of those things. So the fact is that there are, there's going to be some pain that's coming. There's always pain that, that is probable. There's always pain coming, but you can minimize the amount of pain that will come to you and to your family, to your loved ones, if you are planned, if you plan for the emergencies, if you are prepared just a little bit. Now, I'm not talking about going off into the bunkers. I'm not talking about going and finding a cabin in the woods. I'm just talking about being practical in what you do. Practical and taking some steps to prepare for, your, uh, for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. James chapter 4, verse 17 says this. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him, it is sin. And the thing is, is that I feel like I have to talk about this. I feel like I have to talk about what, you know, being prepared and, and letting other people know to be prepared. And it's like, Todd, you have the, the, the website and you have the podcast and you can talk about that there. Yes, but I also need to talk about it here with people that are believers in church. I believe the Lord calls me to do that. And I'm having to do that today. If I don't share this, if I don't share what I feel the Lord is telling me, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I hope people understand that. I get really frustrated with preachers and ministers uh, a lot of the times. And, and one of the things, I want to read the scripture and then I want to come back and follow up on that. But I want to read in Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 to 6, something that the Lord told Ezekiel and it applies here. So Ezekiel chapter 33 Verses 1 to 6 says this, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people, and say to them, If I bring a sword upon a land, and the people of the land take one man from among them, and make him their watchman, 
And he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows on the trumpet and warns the people. Then he who hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But had he taken warning, he would have delivered his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But the blood I will require from the watchman's hand. So like I was saying, I get really frustrated with preachers. Because there's preachers out there, and I, I listen to a wide variety of preachers. I mean, I feed myself on the Word of God and on the Bible, and I have my own personal devotions, but I, I, I feed myself on what I hear other ministers saying all the time. And there's some that talk about preparedness, but it's like they go right up to the line and they, they stop. They talk about being prepared, but then they kind of pull back and say, well, but we don't want to be like those crazy preppers, right? We don't, we, we don't want to be like, you know, like stockpiles and stockpiles and bunkers. And, and preparedness has gotten this weird connotation about that. And part of that is the media and, and the way that the media has spun stuff. I mean, preparedness is just being prepared for emergencies. And so I, I really get frustrated because they see, they know what is coming. We know, I mean, if you look at prophecy, you look at the end times and you look how things are starting to spin up, you see all these things. And so you're like, hey, be prepared. And, and then they, they pull back from that about what being prepared means. And they stop short of telling people. And it really, it just frustrates me because it's like, you know what? You have a duty to talk. I mean, we talk about all the other things out there. We talk about all the other things that are going on in the world. And, and this, I mean, doesn't it make sense that you prepare for your for your own family and for your own welfare and for your I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I think a lot of them don't want to be seen as doomsday prophets or whatever. But in all of that, there's still very practical things that we can do as pastors to share with other other believers but then as believers to prepare and so i want to talk about that today i want to share some practical things that i believe are very important in it, as far as being prepared because i think that that is going to be something that we need to be doing right again not talking about going off the bunkers and not talking about going to your cabin in the woods i'm talking about practical ways that we can be prepared as we see the things that are happening all around us that's just smart so let's talk a little bit about preparedness so first when we talk about getting prepared we need to have a plan now having a plan is so important because the way that you need to prepare is going to be different than the way that i need to prepare so if you have a plan, you know what you are working for. You know what you're doing, you're, where you're headed. So there's a scenario that I want to give you. Let's say you come across a car accident. Someone who has been prepared with first aid knowledge would be able to go in there and start to uh, assess the situation. So if you have been trained in Red Cross or you know whatever it is, you know first aid, you can come across a, a, an accident and you start to look at that accident. And you're like, okay, I need to take care of the person who is, who's, who's not breathing. I need to take care of the person who is, is you know, gushing blood. I need to, I, I, first thing I need to do is I need to tell someone to call 911 and get an ambulance over here. So you're able to do those kinds of things and, and you're able to respond. A person who is not trained, who is not prepared and to deliver first aid is going to come upon a scene and they're going to be like, if, if, if they're not shocked, they're not going to know where to start, where to go, what, you know, what, what, what's going to happen. And so that, that's why when, when they talk about CPR and they talk about first aid, they talk about looking at somebody specifically and say, hey, you, you go call 911 because there's going to be people standing around who are completely in shock, who don't know what to do. And when you give them something to do, then they're able to go do it. So there's going to be a lot of it. So if you're prepared for that, you know how to act and respond. So when we talk about preparedness, the very most important thing is to be prepared with a plan to know exactly what you're doing. 
So the people that live down here on the Gulf Coast are going to plan so much differently than those that are up north with blizzards. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be very, very similar, but there's going to be some things that are going to be different. What about, what about preparing for a job loss? You know, so being careful with, with what I'm saying here and the words that I'm using, but there are people right now that are being forced to do something against their better judgment or lose their jobs. Right? Do, do this thing, and you all know what I'm talking about, do this thing and keep your job or don't do it and lose your job. And so those people who are, are prepared, maybe financially, maybe with food, maybe they're able to withstand a couple of weeks, a couple of months to be able to see how things pan out, are able to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to walk out. I mean, you're going to fire me. I'm going to walk out and I'm going to wait this out. Or th those that don't, those that are not prepared are going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I can't go uh, a couple of days. I can't go a week without getting a paycheck. I, I, I'm in this quandary to do, I don't want to do this, but if I don't do this, then I'm not going to have money to pay for food and electricity and, and, and rent and all those different kinds of things. So when we talk about planning, we talk about being prepared, it's, uh, or we talk about being prepared, it's, it's all about planning and, and knowing exactly what you need to do and, and where you are headed so when there is that hurricane churning in the Gulf, if you are already prepared and planned, you don't have to go out and face all the, the people that are rushing to the store. And again, like I said, uh, you can, you know, the hurricane can be churning in the Gulf. And the minute they say it's coming towards Houston, all the stores are wiped out because everybody goes, everybody waits to the very last minute. They know what they need, but they wait to the very last minute to be prepared. And so they know they know exactly what they need. They need perishable, you know, non-perishable foods. They need uh, ice. They need batteries. They need water. You know, when we had the freeze here in uh, in last February, March, and it was a deep freeze and pipes busted and all those different kinds of things happened. Though you know, people weren't prepared. So I remember going to the grocery store the, the, the morning before the freeze was supposed to hit. And there was, I mean, there was nobody at the store and everything that I ever wanted was there. I mean, I could just go and get everything that I wanted. I didn't leave with, with, without anything that I wanted. And then, you know, the freeze happened and then people were standing in line in the cold to try to get something to eat and something, you know, water and stuff like that because they weren't prepared. So this morning I was thinking, and as I was thinking about uh, this, and so again, going back to that planning aspect of it, I was thinking about this uh, th this next year. I mean, they're saying that there might be another freeze. It's not going to be as bad, but it's going to be up there. It's going to be above. So you think about all the supply shortages and the things that are out there, and then you talk about going into a freeze and busting pipes Think about how, you know, people were already waiting days in, in, you know, almost a week to get a plumber to their house. And at that time, there was a, a you know, uh, a decrease in the supplies that were there. Can you imagine what would happen now if the supply chains are, are not bringing in the plumbing supplies to the stores? What would happen if something like that happened now? Now think about that for a second. So that's where that planning piece comes in. So let's talk about what are some things that you should be planning for, some kinds of things. The first one is shelter. And so I kind of jumped the gun on talking a little bit about your shelter, but you need to make sure that your shelter is in, in good uh, physical repair. You need to make sure that, you know, there's no holes in the ceilings. Uh, so if there's a, uh, you know, if there's a, a rainstorm or thunderstorm, you know, you don't have any shingles that are loose so that, you know, some kind of hurricane or a tropical storm comes in and blows them off. And then you have, you know, a water, water damage in the inside of your house. Going back to this freeze, maybe there are some uh, points that you had that froze last time. And you're like, okay, I'm going to have some replacement. I'm going to go ahead and go now and get some replacement parts. So if something like that happens, I'm able to replace it. Or if 
I call a plumber and they say, we can't do anything. We don't have any supplies. I can say, you know what? I've got the supplies. I just need you to do the work. And maybe there's some emergency tape. I mean, there's some emergency silicone tape that you can buy that you might be able to put, put around a very small leak that would be able to get you by. Or maybe you just, when the freeze comes, maybe you, your plan is, I'm going to look into what I need to do to drain all my pipes before the freeze comes. I might, I might be willing to go without running water in the house for two or three days. And then the free, you know, when the freeze is over, then turn the water back on versus maybe going weeks if, if my pipes bust and I can't get those replacement parts or I can't get a plumber to come out. So there's a plan that you start to be thinking about moving forward. How do I take care of this uh, situation? You know, how do I how do I take care of my shelter? Another thing that you should be planning for is food. And it's just that's just plain common sense. Now, back in the day, I remember going to the store with my mom. And when she was uh, when there wasn't something on the shelves, she would go find a stalker. And she would ask the stalker, hey, do you have this item in the back? And they would go to the back and they would bring it back and they, they'd bring back a case and they say, yeah, how many do you want? You know, two, whatever, one, two. And mom would take what she needed. And then the stalker would replace uh, the stuff that's on the, on, that's missing on the shelves. Well, the system doesn't work that way. Today, we have a just-in-time uh, uh, just time system, distribution system. Which means that when uh, something is bought at the grocery store, it sends an inventory back to the warehouse and then it comes the next day. Now, it's not a one for one, but it's like, hey, you know, this is being bought, so it's just replaced the next day. And for the most part, when everything is working perfectly, it works really, really good. But that is why when we have hurricanes and, you know, hurricanes uh, are, 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 are coming and people go to the stores, it's wiped out because there's no extra stock in the back. So we have this just-in-time you know, distribution system that it's, it's coming and it's just in time so to be replaced on the shelves uh, you know, in the evening time so people that are coming that next day that are there. But how is that working for us right now? So when you know, COVID was going on and the whole lockdowns and things were happening and we were you know, going to the grocery store and minimizing where we were going, I was going to this little mom and top, pop store that is uh, right outside of my neighborhood. And so I'm pointing to it like you know where it's at, right? But back there. <laughs> so I would go to this mom and pop store and they basically had everything I wanted. But there were some things that you could tell, like there was, there was shortages and they were filling the shelves in with different things. Like, you know, like that really doesn't go there, but they're just kind of filling it up to make it feel, make it look like it's full. And then they started having um, brands that I've never heard of before. Now, there was like green beans, but I'd never heard of this uh, this style of green bean before or this brand of green bean before. I was looking for this one thing. So I was able to get everything that I wanted for the most part, but it, you know, it was uh, they didn't have all the supply that I, I completely wanted. But when I went to, I finally started, I stopped going there, started going to HEB, the HEB stores, which is a big you know grocery chain here. They were, they had all the stuff that I was normally used to. So, you know, it would, even the brand. So different stores can bring in different things and knowing that is going to be important where you go. So we might not ever get to a place where, oh my gosh, we're going to starve to death. There might be something out there to eat. But if you can minimize and mitigate the, the, hey, I, I got to eat this instead of this. I'd rather eat this then. You can plan ahead for that now. Now, I highly recommend uh, when you when you talk about food and, and preparing for your food in your pantry is to base it off of menus. There's a lot of people that talk about when you go to the grocery store, if you're buying two uh, cans of green beans, then buy four. If you're going and you're buying, you know, one dishwasher detergent, buy two so that you you know, you have more and build up your stock that way. The problem with that is like if you don't if, if you're just buying and you don't have a plan for that again going back to the plan if you don't have a plan for that when you go to open up your pantry to make something it's like okay I got to figure out what I'm going to make I'm going to make some kind of concoction here I'm going to pull a little bit of this and a little bit of that 
what, whether if you go to or instead, if you go with menus and you plan off of menus, like I have all the ingredients to make this. I have all the ingredients to make this. I have all the ingredients to make this. So you just got to choose, you know, which one do you want uh, off of your menu? And so you can build off of a menu. I highly recommend that you rotate your food. So that means that the things that you bought, uh, the, the, the last, you know, so the, I guess the most recent stuff, let me say it this way. The most recent stuff goes to the back. So you're buying, you're eating the older stuff. And then you're rotating so that it never really expires. You're just you're just rotating through your the, your food. And then I got to tell you something about expiration dates. Expiration dates are really not expiration dates. There's not something when if you have something that expires on 10 17 21 it, on at midnight at 10 17 21. There's not something inside of a can that all all of a sudden says boop. You're not any good anymore, right? A lot of the times, the, the dates that you see on uh, food are best use dates. So that means that, okay, it might not be the freshest, but you can still eat it. And that's really important because we throw out a lot of food out there. And, but again, if you're rotating your food, you don't, you don't wind up going through that if you're, if you're smart about how you're doing that. So the next thing that you need to plan for is medical. So there's a lot of people out there that are on prescription drugs, you know, for whatever reason, for, for whatever it might be. And when we're looking at what's happening right now and the shortages and things that are happening, it might be a good idea for you to talk to your doctor and say, hey, look, I don't I'm hearing about, you know, shortages. I just want to make sure that I don't run out of my medicine, especially if it is an important medicine for you to have. So there's a lot of physicians out there that will give you another uh, an, another prescription or a double prescription or whatever it might be to, to go out there. And even if you have to pay out of pocket for it, it would be worth it to have it than to not have it. So that might be something that you need to plan for is prescription medication. Or maybe you have a loved one that has a prescription medication. You don't wanna go without that. So that's really important. In the med medical and the, that aspect, I'm going to talk a little bit about hygiene as well. It's hard to, to think about not having hygiene items, but that might be something that you want to, to stock up on and something that you might want to have. Again, we're talking about stocking up for you, your families, your loved ones. And also, if you want to and you know that there might be people that are going through hard times, that you could help them out as well. But hygiene is going to be very important. So again, I think there's always going to be soap out there. There's always going to be shampoo. You can get those kinds of things. The thing is, is it the kind that you want, right? Is it, is it what you're really wanting? And so I think it's smart to go ahead and think about how much you really use. How much toilet paper do you use? How much, uh, you know, in a month? How much shampoo do you go through yeah, in, in a month? How much soap, you know? And having those things on hand so it's there. Listen, worst case scenario is you need to dig into your supplies and you don't have them. Yeah, you know I mean, the stores are run out, right? For whatever reason, supply chain shortages, blah, blah, blah. Best case scenario is, okay, I have some stock here and I don't have to worry about going to the store. If I need to miss a week, I can miss a week because I have, you know, enough supplies here. So you think about the hygiene items and the things that you uh, use on a regular basis, toothpaste and things like that. It's just smart to have a little bit there. I'm not talking about, you know, hoarding things. I'm talking about just getting what you need, but having an understanding and planning ahead. Another thing that you, sh you should plan for is safety. We don't always talk about this. We don't always think about this, but look at your surroundings. Has your surroundings changed throughout the years? You know, you, maybe if you've lived in a certain place for a very long time, you might not be paying attention to the changes that are going on in your community. Maybe there are, uh, you know, stores are closing down. Maybe there are, you know, infrastructure is being let go and they're not taking care of buildings and things are being run down. People aren't cutting their grass anymore. Uh, you know, uh, there's just things starting to look trashy. You know, that begins to tell you, hey, there are people that are financially not in a good place and they're letting things go. And that always has other ramifications. 
So you want to be thinking about that. Are you a person that's always on their phone everywhere you go? Maybe you need to be paying attention up and your eyes are out and you're paying attention to what is going on around you. Leaving, you know, going to the grocery store, leaving the mall or whatever it might be is of paying attention to if someone wants to do some kind of harm. I think it's smart that you lock your doors, you know. I'm on a couple of uh, neighborhood groups and there's... Um, you know, a week does not go by when someone shares out some kind of video or pictures uh, from their from their uh, house cameras that shows someone going through their cars or trying to open them up to see if they're unlocked. One of the things: don't leave things uh, like uh, backpacks or you know tools or something like that out in the open. I, I've known a lot of people who have had their cars broken into. Some in nice restaurants cars broken into to steal a laptop i mean the idea is like if you see a backpack there could be some books in there there could be a laptop there could be a phone there could be some electronics in there and an ipad or a tablet or whatever and so that's a quick you know turnaround where you get able to to grab that and smash and grab and go and sell that so think about your safety there might be uh, a need to put some uh, some kind of cameras up in your in your area and just for safety reasons Maybe not even for safety reasons, but maybe you just, you know, you don't want to come to the door and like the ring doorbell. I don't know if you've ever seen those before, but uh, you can connect those to your Wi-Fi and they can be connected to your phone. So when someone comes and rings your uh, your door, you could be at work and you could have a conversation with someone to make them think that you're at home or, you know, it, it records who comes up to to the to the door. And so you have an idea of who's coming up and, and, and uh, if, you know, if they're wanting to do something bad or not. Again, we're just planning ahead of time. The world is crazy right now. So thinking about some of these things, I think, would imp be important. And then finances. We should be planning ahead for our finances and thinking about smart moves right now for our finances. You know, I, I spoke with a guy yesterday i did an episode an interview who he went through the collapse in argentina back in the day he was a college student and we started talking about all the things that they went through you know back then it was like and, and my whole premise for interviewing him right now is like you went through that collapse in argentina but some of the things that you went through it seems like they're worldwide right now you know and so we talked a little bit about that and uh you know his experiences and stuff like that but one of the things that he talked about is, you know, the people at the very top, if you think about a pyramid, the people at the very top, uh, you know, the one percenters, the people who are multimillionaires, whenever there's a crunch, an economic crunch, or prices go up and inflation, they don't really feel it. I mean, it doesn't, you know, if they have to pay an extra $2 or $3 or $4, $5, whatever, for whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to them. But the people that start to feel that crunch are the people that start going down that pyramid. So you might be upper middle class, but because of inflation and the things that happen, you might move down to middle middle class or lower middle class. The people that are lower middle class might wind up moving down to being poor officially, you know, when you talk about the numbers. And the people that are poor might be really, really poor and, and, and in poverty. So it's smart to think about your finances right now and think about, hey, what we need, what do we need to do to uh, be able to have a little bit more money in savings or to whatever we need to do to boost uh, our, our finances and all those different kinds of things. Right. So, again, that's that planning piece. Maybe you want to get out of debt. Maybe you want to have an emergency fund and you've been messing around and you haven't been you've been spending all your money just having fun. Right. And so it's like, hey, we need to have an emergency fund in case we need to dig into it to pay the bills, in case we need to dig into it to, uh, you know, buy gas or whatever it might be. Maybe we have an emergency. Maybe our vehicle uh, goes goes down, right? And we need to, we have a big four or five hundred dollar uh, bill. There was a, a statistic not too long ago that people just didn't have four hundred dollars in their savings account to be able to. Uh, to go through and to weather a hit of four hundred dollars, so I mean every time we go to the to the auto mechanic, it just seems like the auto shop. It seems like it's four hundred dollars. So you think of someone who is struggling and someone who is going through some hard times on top of inflation and all the things that are happening, and then they have a, a car issue 
and then they're out four or five hundred dollars, but they don't have that in savings. So think about that. That's that's really important. Something that you know, you you would want to be able to cover. Something that you would want to have. So maybe you do whatever you need to do to, to boost your finances, right? A, a side hustle, some garage sales. You cut back on some things, but it's planning. You start to plan ahead, so you are prepared when the time comes. Another way to get prepared is to stay aware of what is going on. And so I think this is highly important. Now, many people nowadays, I mean, the, the trust in the government and the trust in the media is so far down there. People don't, I mean, I think people trust used car sales more than the media and the government right now. I mean, there are things that are happening that you don't hear about. For instance, did you hear about Italy and what is going on in Italy? You might not have heard about that. On October 15th, the Italian government said that if you don't have your papers, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm trying to censor myself here uh, because this is on uh, on social media. If you don't have your papers, you cannot work anymore. So can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine that? You can't work anymore if you do not have your special papers. Think about it. What does that sound like? Those of you who are familiar with the Bible and, and where things are headed, what does that sound like? So there are major, major protests in Italy right now. And you don't hear about them in the mainstream media. The only way you hear about those are on alternative news and, and you hear about them on, uh, on you know, like on Twitter and, and you see the videos in, in the, the, the crowds of people in all the different cities is just massive amounts of people that are protesting. You're not hearing about Australia and all the crazy things that are going on in Australia unless you are seeing it from somewhere else. So it is it's crazy out there, but we need to stay informed. Now, listen, one of the, the, one of the ways that I like to stay informed, I use Twitter a lot, and I, I follow news organizations. I don't really care about following the Kardashians or, or you know, what people had for dinner. I, you know, that's not what I'm, I'm there for. I'm, I'm following more for the news and, and that aspect. So I follow news organizations from all different, uh, from the, from all different sides. But one of the other places that I like to get news is through prophecy preachers. Now there are some, you got to be careful. There are some that are sensational and they have the clickbait out there and, you know, they do provide some good information, but it's all, you know, clickbait and they're trying to get the, the views and all that kind of stuff. But a couple that I like to listen to are, is, is John Howler and Jacob Prash. And, these guys have big followings from all over the world. And so when things are going on, I mean, they do their own research and they do all that kind of stuff, but um, they people are also sharing things. Hey, this is going on in my city. This is going on over here. This is happening over there. And, and so they're always able to share. So they have the context of Bible prophecy, but they're also sharing so that people can understand what is happening and what's going on in the world. So I think that is a very big, um, I mean, I, the, those two, I never miss their, their, their broadcast, their videos, because I think it's very helpful to know what's going on. But the thing is, is you can't fear. And that's, that's the thing. A lot of people don't want to know what's going on because fear runs rampant. And, you know, th that's the thing. Fear gets you into a, a paralyzed state where you're not able to move. And we don't want to fear. We're not supposed to live by fear. But we need to know what is going on so that we can make informed decisions out there. So have your places where you are looking. You know, I, I gave up on cable news a long, long time ago. But find places where you feel like you can trust people to hear about what is going on. People that are not giving your you opinions. You know, when I went to Houston Baptist and, and I graduated from Houston Baptist, I went and I had uh, two degrees, right? I, I graduated with two majors. My first one is Christianity, and that's really what I went to Houston Baptist for. But my second one was mass media. So I figured, hey, you know what? If I am uh, going to be in the pulpit, maybe, you know, uh, communication skills is something that would be valuable for me. Well, knowing that it wasn't just that, it was journalism, it was television production, it was, it was all those different kinds of things. And so you had to emphasize in, in one area. And I was going the journalism route. 
and really I ended up emphasizing in television production. And really the difference was one class. <laughs> it, was really, it was really crazy, it was just one class. But in journalism, when I, was, when I started out, it was all about hard news. And I was on the paper and I would remember, you know, I was a, a freshman going to college and I was in the paper and I was, you know, write articles and, and they're like, hey, Todd, this is opinion. This is not, you know, this isn't the you know, news. And I'm like, oh. so it was always about hard news. And my professor was always about just the facts, ma'am. Well, then I, I dropped out of school. When I went back, things started to change just a little bit. As USA Today started to become really popular. And for the most part, a lot of people said USA Today wasn't going to make it. But they, they did get popular. And some there's a lot more opinion pieces. Nowadays in the news, it's all about opinions. That's all you hear. That's all you, it, it, there's no real true facts, you know, just the facts and giving you the facts. And so you've got to find those places that are you, where you can truly find the facts. But not fear, not come from a place of fear, but come from a place where you are understanding what is happening. Like Jesus said, how do you not see the signs and not know the time that you're living in so that you can make informed decisions for you, your family, your loved ones, the people around you, the people that you want to take care of. The third thing and the most important way to get prepared is spiritually. And so here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much planning you do. It doesn't matter how much stuff you have. It doesn't matter if you have a bunker or you go to the woods and, and you have a place in the woods with uh, water streaming from the mountain, crystal clear mountain water. That means absolutely nothing because when you breathe your last breath and the or the trumpet sounds, whichever one comes first, it doesn't matter how much food you have or how well prepared you have. You're going to be face to face with the Lord. Luke chapter 21, verse 34 to 36 says this, Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that day will not come on you suddenly like a trap. We've read this just recently, right? For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of all the earth. But keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Man, listen, heaven is real. And I don't, man, that's like the best news that you can ever hear. Heaven is real. Because sometimes this world is so jacked up. It's like, man, Lord, I'm ready for you. Lord, if you want to, I don't know, have you ever woke, woken up in the morning like, Lord, I mean, you can come today. Come today. Today would be a good day, right? Or maybe you're right in the middle of your day like, Lord, just come right now, whatever it might be. And so that's, that's good news is that heaven is real. But hell is is also real. You know, there are people out there that believe that everyone's going to heaven. It doesn't, you know, all it, it doesn't matter. You're going to heaven. It doesn't matter. At some point, there's going to be like a, a reprieve. At some point, there's going to be a, some magic, magic wand, special dust kind of thrown all over, over everybody. And, and everybody, you get to heaven, you get to heaven, you get to heaven, right? Just like Oprah. No way. Heaven is real and hell is real. And there's going to be a lot of people on that day who were just hoping that they could skim by, hoping that there was a second chance that are going to be very, very disappointed because at that point, it's said and done. So the most important thing is being prepared spiritually. And if you are prepared in all those other ways, you're prepared physically and you're prepared and you, you have the knowledge and you have all those different kinds of things. Then when the poop hits the fan and all these things start going down, then you are prepared spiritually and you're prepared physically and prepared spiritually. You're able to minister to other people and you're able to help other people because you're not worried about all the other physical things. You know, you know, when you don't have food and your kids are crying or you don't have food and, you, and, and your household is worried, then you're, you're going to be focused on that and it's going to kill you. It's going to be like turn you in, into knots. But if all those things are, are, are set 
And then you are in that situation where like, you know what, we're, we're good in that. Now I can minister to people that are hurting out there. I can minister to my family. I can minister to my loved ones. I can minister to my neighbors. I can minister to those people out there that are, are looking at the world and, and so depressed. I mean, with the whole COVID thing and all the things that happened, people are so depressed and worried and full of anxiety and there's, you know, suicides were going up and all those different things. And if you were worried about all that, you might not have been able to reach out to those people and help them. And so if we come to a time where times really, really get rough, then when you are prepared that way, you are able to help more people spiritually as well. You're able to help them in that way. So heaven is real, but hell is real, and there's going to be a lot of people going to hell. And if we can help people get on the right road, get on the narrow road, man, what a blessing that is to be, to do. I want to end with looking at a very prepared message in the Bible. And that is looking at the story of Joseph. And I just want to look at some just some quick scriptures here, but we're going to jump around. So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 41, and we're going to read three, uh, script, uh, three verses there. And we're going to jump to verse 45, or chapter 45, verses 4 to 15. All right? So uh, just we're, going to, we're ending it right here, but uh, I want to read this to you here. So Genesis chapter 41, verses 46 to 49. Now Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. During the seven years of plenty, the land brought forth abundantly. So he gathered all the food of these seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt, and placed the food in the cities. He placed in every city the food from its own surrounding fields. Thus, Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea until he stopped measuring it, for it was beyond measure. Listen, Joseph was told that there was going to be some hard times coming. And he told Pharaoh what needed to be done. Pharaoh put him in charge. And because he did, they had food plentiful in all the land. Verse 40, chapter 45, verses 4. Then Joseph, this is when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Joseph said to his brothers, please come closer to me. And they came closer and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Now, therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his household and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall live in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will also provide for you, for there are still five years of famine to come. And you and your household and all that you have would be impoverished. Behold, your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth which is speaking to you. Now you must tell my father of all my splendor in Egypt and all that you have seen, and you must hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. He kissed all his brothers and wept on them, and afterwards his brother, his brothers talked with him. Listen, jo Joseph knew that all the heartache and all the pain and all the things that he endured all those years, he was able to look at all of that and say, God was preparing a way for me to save my family. You think about the brothers in all their family. I mean, they had kids. They had kids. They might have had grandkids by this time. And they're sitting around and, you know, Jacob finally tells them like, hey, go to Egypt and go get some, go get some grain. Go see if you can find some grain because they didn't have anything. And they were going to lose everything. They were going to starve. 
And then all of a sudden, God provides in this great way because Joseph was obedient and prepared. So imagine that the Lord is calling you today to be prepared where you can benefit your your kids and your grandkids and your friends and your neighbors and and those and and I'm not saying that you got to go store up a whole house full full of food but you know having a little bit extra to share even if it's rice and beans or whatever in a time of crisis how how much would that speak about the love of God and the the assurance of the Lord that's out there so being prepared is not against the Bible. Being prepared is not against what God would want us to do. Listen, it's just common sense. And the Lord wants us to look at what's going on and to make good decisions about what is happening. So hopefully you will make good decisions around here. There's a lot of good advantages to being prepared. And like I said, and I've said many times already in this message, one of those is that you can be there for your family and your loved ones to help them in a time of need. Amen? Amen.